Hello and welcome to The Other Marthas, the show where a drama student and a film graduate try to make sense of things we wish we were qualified in instead, specialising in mystery, history, murder and all things morbid. A quick disclaimer before we get started, we don't claim to be experts in any of the fields we'll be talking about, so while everything we say will be based on individual research, it's just for a bit of fun and we suggest that you take everything we say with a pinch of salt. I'm Martha, I'm the drama student. And I'm the other Martha, the film graduate. So Martha, what are we talking about today? Today I am telling you the true story story that inspired Moby Dick. Because we've not learned from previous nautical <laughs> themes. Well, I really like the story mm -hmm. and it just so happens to contain whales. Yeah. I, to be fair, I saw uh, this video was recommended to me on YouTube that was like the true story of Moby Dick and I almost clicked on it in spite of myself because it does sound interesting. Today you can learn all about it without added visuals. Yes, oh that's such a good point. Although I suppose Story you could like podcast. not look at the screen. That's true, but this way is better, probably. Well, I can tell you in a soothing voice. Oh, thank you. Because my voice is renowned for how soothing, soothing it is. <laughs> is, um, is Moby Dick the one that starts with my name is Ishmael? Yes, I was reading it uh, a while ago. I did not, I did not read a lot of it, I was reading chapters to mm. my grandmother Aww. because she's studying it she said she was bored and traumatized so i started <laughs> reading chapters to her admittedly i think i got the most interesting chapters because i got the ones where they started whaling right. whereas she had the ones where they were traveling for six months and didn't catch a whale so uh, there's a lot of specific authors that do that like uh, sebastian forks absolutely like renowned author he wrote bird song um, which is a war oh, novel, yeah. um, yep. and some other stuff. But the thing is, I've read Birdsong, and it is fantastic, but the first sort of, to my recollection, two-thirds of the book are just the main character getting frisky with this lady in France. I went on, um, like, a Battlefields tour with our mm. school, and I remember the, like, hotel that we were staying in. It was like a youth hostel -y place. Yeah. Across the courtyard, I could see some of the girls in the year above us, Mm. all crowded round a bunk bed reading bird song and laughing and i was like i was so <laughs> they're really not at the war yet a lot of moby dick seems like herman herman melville the author is oh, trying yeah. to let everyone know how much he knows about whaling ah. he's one of those authors and whales in general but because it was written like in the 1800s like late 1800s it's like he, he doesn't, doesn't actually. <laughs> know that much about whales because like they were busy killing all the whales instead of yeah. learning about them uh, you know in a in a nice way tell me about moby dick i shall um, uh, will you at some point get to the etymology of the title just in that i have absolutely no idea what on earth it means yes i can tell you now oh, um you. moby dick's the name of the whale mm. that they hunt well, there we are and um, I believe that there was another, so the book Moby Dick was partially inspired by this story I'm about to tell you, and also inspired by another story that's about a whale that is called, I'm going to have to look it up because I don't want to get it wrong. Right. And it's such a weird title. <laughs> it is as weird as I thought. Uh, yeah, so he used the story of the Essex, which is the boat that I'm talking about. And he also used the story of a real whale called Mocha Dick, who, di <laughs> who died in 1838 and was a sperm whale that lived in the Pacific Ocean. It was usually encountered in the waters near Mocha Island ah. of, of the central coast of Chile. He was an albino whale that inspired oh. old mobs. Oh. I don't know the origin of referring to a whale as so like <laughs> no as um why his sir why oh, the Dick, whale's yeah. surname is always Dick maybe for Richard maybe but why why would they assume it's called Richard <laughs> I don't know or maybe because they don't like him and so they're like oh <laughs> Moby Dick mate no but genuinely like if it's a massive whale <laughs> that like loads of whalers have encountered and. Oh, they're like we bastard back again. Like yeah, so they're like, oh, what should we call him? As we were saying before, we got <laughs> onto old Mocha Dick. The year is eighteen nineteen. Oh yeah, and it's time to assemble a crew 
for the whaling ship the Essex. Mm -hmm. It is captained by a little man called George Pollard. Oh, good name. Junior. George Pollard Junior is his name, but I'm just going to call him Pollard. Uh, And he had previously worked on the Essex as second and first mate. Mm -hmm. So he is loving life. He's like, wow, look at me, I'm the captain. Um, First mate of this endeavour is called Owen Chase Mm -hmm. and the second mate is called Matthew Joy. So we're having a lovely time. There is a crew of 21 and includes Pollard's 17-year-old cousin called Owen Coffin. They all have fantastic surnames. And also, as well as Owen Coffin, um, Coffin's two childhood friends, Charles Ramsdell and Barzillai Ray. Barzillai? (laughs) Yes. Brilliant. Is this, are these people all like, is this happening in England? Or oh, sorry, I'm such a fool, I've not told right. you. Um, no, we are in Nantucket, which is a whaling town. It's been a whaling town for a very, very long time, and they killed all the whales that live near them. Cool. So now they have to go on really long voyages to find whales. Do they how do they also, utilize the whales? They would use their bones for corsets, umbrellas, mm-hmm. um, classic. They would take the blubber and boil it to make whale oil, which okay was like lamp oil right and they would also take ambergris which lives in the it doesn't live it's not alive it it exists in the whales like intestines Mm. and it's used in perfume then we have a cabin boy called thomas nickerson (laughs) and and we have a whole bunch of other sailors. We've got right. we've got 14 other sailors knocking about on the boat, some of whom are white men from Nantucket, mm-hmm. and some of whom are black men, don't know where they're from. Nantucketers were Quakers. So on paper, everything's equal mm. um, between the black and the white whalers. They were treated equally, paid equally, everyone's having a great time, except they're not. Uh, because in reality the black sailors were generally given the most physically demanding jobs mm. and they had no opportunity to advance and were given the worst quarters and food right and were always seen as outsiders that sort of sets the scene on the boat august 12th 1819 the essex set sail for a two-year voyage to South America. Wow. Off they go. They're having a wonderful time. Mm. Well, hey, I think um, the cabin boy, old Thomas, he, I think he referred to it as one of the best moments of his life when he stepped onto the, sh- the deck of the Essex. Oh. Yeah. So they hit bad weather in the Gulf Stream where they suffered a knockdown, which is basically where, in a storm, instead of being upright you're sideways ah, <laughs> like the me. whole boat is just on its side yeah. and everyone it with it there's like all thunder and lightning and everyone's sideways <laughs> this is after the storm people started blaming pollard because when they like were approaching the storm he wasn't like hey guys there's a storm let's like he was just like sideways things. will do and they eventually managed to get the ship upright which is good it'd be weird if i thought it's bad in fact i do think it's bad because they're killing whales true should have stayed sideways (laughs) you should have stayed sideways and drowned pollards um so after the storm some of the sails were destroyed and two out of five whale boats were lost and a third one was badly damaged Mm. and technically for a whale hunt you need three and then two spares and so. what do you do with... <laughs> Hold on, sorry. So <laughs> what do you do? Bit... <laughs> what do you do? So you're on like your main voyagey boat, la la la, and then you go, oh, look, a whale, and then you get into your little... So you can get like closer to it and whale it. Shall I tell you how to hunt a whale? Yes, please. First of all, I'm just going to tell you um, some ship terminology, which is yeah. like not ship terminology. I just want to make it clear now so that then later i don't have to keep clarifying right the ship is the big boy Mm -hmm. the boats are the small boys Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's all the terminology i'm telling you great (laughs) but it's just because then 
you can go and they get off the ship and but one of the boats is broken. yeah yeah it's just easier okay so how you hunt a whale you're sailing on your ship you spy a whale if you're feeling murderous towards <laughs> the whale lower your boats so you lower three three boats race towards the whale harpoon the whale then it's like swimming around freaking out but the point of the harpoon is to keep the whale with you right because then, the harpoon's on the end of a rope yes then the first mate gets a bit stabby oh. with it looks like a harpoon but it's not got a string on it okay like oh. a spear basically this is still um, from from the boats yeah from the three boats and they stab it 10 to 15 times in the heart and the lungs. Ugh. Then it spurts blood from its blowhole. Oh. Which, fun whaling terminology, they would shout, chimneys of fire. Oh my god. Yep. You think um, anyone who's in the vicinity to hear that could also see that? Yeah, but they like shouting things, right. don't yeah, they, just whalers? For fun. Eventually, after thrashing about for ages, the whale dies, yeah. it turns on its side. And then they take the corpse back to the ship to butcher it and make all their various bits yeah. and bobs. And then they chuck the carcass off of the ship for the sharkies. Gah, delicious. So that's the joy of whaling, which is why they need three boats. And they've only got two proper boats. Right. So it's not going well for them. Captain Pollard decides he's going to go back to Nan Nantucket. He's like, hey, lads. We've only got two boats and we need five. So let's go back to Nantucket for different boats. Mm. Good plan. Owen Chase is all like, no, I don't want to go back to Nantucket. And I'm the stabby stabber. Yes, he is the stabby stabber. And he says he wants to go to the Azores. A Azores? It's oh, some Azores. islands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the Azores, of course. The Azores, darling, come on. <laughs> Didn't do geography. So they continue to the the Azores. The Azores. The Azores. But they had no boats there. They so had no boats on the Azores Islands. Well, no whaling boats. Whaling right. boats are like 20 feet long. Oh, wow. Okay. So like... <laughs> like how, wh what are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's not just like, oh, uh, we They're could have any old starving. fishing Have boat. you tried one of the fish that's everywhere around you on <laughs> an island? No, they don't have... Whaling boats. Whaling boats. Weeks later, they do find an old whaling boat on a wrecked ship off the coast of West Africa. Ooh. And they take that with them. Fair enough. Um, but it's like old and leaky and a bit rubbish. So it's not great. They continue south, spoiler alert, to South America. Ooh. And finally they spot a whale. So they like clamber on down, murder the whale, do all the whale things. Mm -hmm. They now are nearing Cape Horn. They've only killed one whale and they've been out for four months, which is like bad whale numbers off the coast of chile i've ca i've caved i'm pronouncing yeah, it how martha yeah, no, wants I me to you on that one yeah it's you fine, did bully you me say, say, say chile if you want to it's just, like it just feels no weird to i'm me going like i'm going with chile way. and if people bully me for saying chile i'm gonna say i was immediately bullied their bully. <laughs> by you and yeah. so they need to come to you not me <laughs> off the coast of chile they killed around 11 whales hurrah pollard is like hey we're on a whale roll. Let's kill some more. And he says that they are going to go to the offshore ground, which is far out from the coast of Peru, mm -hmm. because you can't move for whales there. And okay. not a lot of people go there. Right. Probably why there are whales there. Before they go there, one of the sailors, Henry DeWitt, is like, peace, I'm going to Ecuador and gets off the boat. All right. He, hold on. He's called DeWitt. How's that spelled? You really don't need to know his name because he never comes back into the story. Oh, fine. Because he deserted the boat in Ecuador. Yeah, all right. <laughs> but good decision. Yes. The Essex ship, before they went to the offshore ground, they go and have a party at the Galapagos Islands. They're like, before we go to the middle of the ocean, let's go here. They caught 180 tortoises. 
Oh. Yeah, for food. The tortoises were allowed to roam the deck. Which, I have a quote from the ship. Mm. Um, they said, these tortoises are a most delicious food. They are strewn over the deck, thrown underfoot. And I just love the image of like, because tortoises don't have feet for ships. So they be like skittering around. Oh like, God. Getting these were, these were tortoises, not turtles. Like Galapagos tortoises. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, land beasts. Beasts oh. of the land. They also then, for a prank, um, set fire to an island that's part of the Galapagos Island group. Oh um, my God. That was called Charles Island is, and is now called Floriana Island. Uh-huh. And it destroyed the ecosystem and contributed to the extinction of uh, the Floriana tortoise and the Floriana mockingbird. Oh so, no! Like these, these guys, guys are dickheads. A bad guys. Yeah. Oh. And then they took off to the offshore ground which apparently for like a long time they could see the fire of the island they'd set fire to and destroyed so they're in the offshore ground and a massive whale is spotted but almost everyone is already out on the whaling boats hunting another whale so no one is on the ship other than like uh nickerson the cabin boy um and also owen chase is on the ship because he has to repair his boat because a whale had broken it (laughs) before now yeah Um, i assume there are other people on the ship because you can't just leave a ship with two men yeah well one boy and a man on it yeah but those are the main players so they're on the ship hammering away fixing their boat and nickerson is like whoa there's a massive whale it's 85 feet long hold on i'm trying to visualize what that means you know what that is in meters i'm gonna look it up okay what's 85 feet in meters that would be 25.91 meters oh my god oh okay meters. big whale jesus christ i think um doing archery has changed my perception of distance right because for me when I hear 20 metres, I'm like, 20 metres. But obviously that's still like 20 metres. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. For, because like, you, like imagine you shoot... To shoot something that far away. That's a long way. No, you shoot 20 metres when you're like a little archery oh, baby. You're learning. And so like, if someone said like, oh, it's 60 metres, I'd be like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's big for a whale. I'm sorry to mock you, Moby. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was going to say, because I was thinking, I was like, but the 200 metre sprint is so small. And I'm like, yeah, but a whale? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's big. Yes, I suppose so. We apologise. But apparently that's big for a whale as well. Mm. And um, it's acting weirdly, allegedly. Okay. <laughs> I love that I put allegedly like it could be assassinating this whale's character. The whale is like, <laughs> screw you guys. And charges the boat. Oh my god. And Wait, he, they're like, on a boat. I thought they were on the ship. The ship. I apologize. Okay. The whale charges the ship and it like quakes the whole ship and everyone on board is like, whoa, oh what's happening? Because this has never happened. The whale will sometimes accidentally, or on oh, purpose, I suppose, that. attack the boats, but it's never happened in their mind that a whale has found the ship and attacked that mm. the crew's a bit shaken yeah. and they start saying things like this is the whale's revenge <laughs> so chase is like i'm gonna stab this whale oh. and he gets his spear and he goes to stab the whale but he's concerned about damaging the rudder because the whale's too close to it to stab mm. i don't re- i think i think chase is being a bit of a coward if i'm honest Um, Which, fair enough, I wouldn't want to stab a whale that's trying to murder me either. So the whale swims away. They start trying to put the ship back in order, probably like set the tortoises back on their feet. (laughs) And all of a sudden, someone yells out that the whale's coming back and it charges them again. And this time it hits the front of the ship, tips it backwards, uh, floods and capsizes the ship. (gasps) 
Oh my god. Yep. And the crew grab navigational equipment and all hop onto the whale boat. Yeah. I think the one they're in the middle of fixing. <laughs> and then they're like sat in their tiny boat while their massive ship sinks. And it only took 10 minutes. Jesus. So that's like, you know how people are always like, oh, things can go wrong so fast. Mm, mm. Like, there's that, and then there's like a whale. Yeah, things are fine, and then they're just so not fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's Imagine like such being an one of the guys version. in the other boats, like, you, you're towing this enormous whale back. Like, hey, guys, what's up? Uh, mm, well, yeah. Yeah, funny story. This did happen. Oh, no. Um, I don't know that they had caught a whale, but they mm. were in the middle of trying to get a whale and they looked back <laughs> to where their ship should be and they were like where's the ship oh. and all you can see is another boat like hey <laughs> sorry <laughs> so they're all a bit spooked yeah and they're not gonna have a fun night on the ocean no oh, before we get into that i want to defend this lovely whale as we know whales mostly navigate with their hearing you know because they like yell and then the sound that comes back is how they tell mm -hmm. what's going on they also have really bad eyesight and okay. so one theory is that because a lot of people are like we don't know why the whale did this but mm. one theory is that the whale heard all the banging from the ship yeah from repairing the boat mm and thought it was another whale who was being aggressive towards it ah. and then it Watch. they assume he attacked the ship because he thought it was a whale yeah it makes sense fair enough easy mistake to make pollard the captain orders the crew to s that is not a word he orders the crew to salvage supplies i've written <laughs> scalvage like oh. scavenge <laughs> and so they're all like trying to grab barrels of water i think like two hogs and some tortoises swim to the boats and they pull them on um <laughs> these poor animals cannot catch a break i know because also like, they're, they're like, food mm, here we are on our lovely island oh it's on fire oh well here we are just getting used to this ship oh christ we're in the water well thank god we've figured out how to swim oh well now we're on another eaty eaty boat and i assume that that's not going to end well for them either it doesn't. <laughs> it's agreed that by the crew that they will not go to, oh, it's another fun one for me who never took Spanish, Marquesas Islands? Marquesas? I guess. Yeah, Marquesas. But then I can't, I'd be really hypocritical if I'm then saying, oh, what are you saying Chile for? It's Chile. And then be yeah, like, but then put on a... Marquesas. Yeah, um, so Marquesas yeah. Islands, uh, which is 1,200 miles away. Oh. So yeah. they decide not to go there. They're not going there. And the reason they're not going there is because they suspect that cannibals live there and they don't want to be eaten. Pollard says that they could head for the next nearest island, which is the Society Islands. But Chase and the rest of the crew are again like, hey, we've heard cannibals live there, so we don't want to go there. And they decide that they are going to head back to South America. Okay. Which they're very far away from. Yeah. Their goal is like, if we're on the path from South America to where we are, the offshore place, mm. what do they call it? Offshore ground, which is ironic because there's no ground. Um, if they are on that path, a ship might find them. Right, yeah. Rather than like having to row all the way to Peru. Yeah. Fun fact about these islands that they didn't go to because they were worried about cannibals. There weren't cannibals there. Yeah, I thought I thought that might be the case. Yeah. Um. In fact, there have been Christian missionaries on the Society Islands for twenty years, and as far as we know, they hadn't been eaten. So it well, probably would have been fine if they um, hadn't been so bloody prejudiced. Exactly. We'll get on to the full irony. Okay. So the 20 remaining sailors are split between the three boats. Mm -hmm. They have two months worth of supplies, which they also share between the boats. They've got hardtack, which are like those weird square biscuits. Oh, yeah. Water and tortoises. <laughs> and a hog. 
Yes, and two hogs. No one mentioned to me where the hogs went, but I assume they were I guess on the boats. I it was quite hard to divide into three. Maybe the other boat got an extra tortoise. Yeah, maybe. And then the leaders of each boat are Pollard, Chase and Joy, and they each get a gun. Great. How fun. With their rations, I'd say they have two months of rations. <laughs> they don't have two months of rations. Their rations need to last two months. Ah. Um, and for this, they receive a third of what an adult man needs so they get one biscuit and half a pint of water a day initially they try and stick together because jo- joy's boat has no navigational equipment oh my god i'd be like guys can i have a compass at least yeah. <laughs> like surely you can spare me a compass but apparently yeah. not quite quickly on the sea the men developed painful sores due to the exposure of heat and salt water mm. um on chase's boat the men were really thirsty mm-hmm. um this is by day six because their biscuits either in the crash or being on the boat had gotten saturated with seawater oh. so they're eating salty biscuits and then only getting half a pint of water oh God. so it's not a good time no. uh, and they are in the early stages of hypernatremia which is too much sodium 10 days in Mm. chase's boat which was being repaired during the attack is starting to fall apart and pollard's boat also now requires repairs because while they were like paddling along and being sad because they had no ship they were attacked by a killer whale (gasps) oh my god these poor guys can you imagine Apparently, oh most god. nights they were besieged by whales. Oh my god! I mean, like, Which I you serve them right, but I can't. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at these men who uh, yeah. have spent their whole careers murdering whales, and now Just the second crying they're... in a boat, we're like, please yeah. stop, please stop. But surely they must have felt like the whales are taking revenge. Yeah, because it a whale killed their ship. And then <laughs> the whales hunt them at night. Yeah, I mean, they were probably thinking fair enough in as much as they were thinking anything about the ethics of the whales doing what they Oh, doing. yeah. But they would, like, these men were, like, terrified at this point. I, well, which, yeah. Fair enough. So 17 days in, the wind has pushed them further away from South America because they're kind of, I don't think they're rowing. I think they're using the wind and the sea to okay. transport them. Um, which is an odd choice yeah. because you're not going to get where you want to go that way. No. <laughs> they are quite close at this point to the Society of Islands and oh, no. they still decide not to go. Um, they're having to drink their own urine at this point. Their mouths weren't creating saliva. They spoke endlessly about how thirsty they are to the point of losing their voices you'd think if you're like oh my throat is in is in so much pain you'd go well i could shut up or i could use what's left of my like dry little neck crusty to just, throat. To just moan about it like i'm sure i would moan about it because they've been on the sea for like two weeks with nothing but I think I would be like, guys, would it be possible to drop me off with the cannibals? Because at this point, (laughs) I'll risk it. Exactly. You would really think, rather than slow death and constantly being terrorised by whales, like, you'd take your chance. Even if there were cannibals, you'd take your chances. I would take my chances with the cannibals. Because at also this point, like, they must be, like, they were losing weight quite fast. Mm. And because they're, like, really dehydrated, they're, like, all shriveled anyway. So, like, you don't look like a tasty snack. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, we're your either dried crisps or to help us, people. Hi, we're a crusty husk of a human. Would you like a snack? Yeah. They're days away from death. And then salvation. Oh, it's not the end of the story, though. Yeah. They find Henderson Island, mm. uh, which is little cute little island they find um so they do stop here i suppose because they don't think there are cannibals um and they drink water from a spring they ate all of the birds all of the birds eggs and all of the fish that they could find (laughs) 
So again, they've massively depleted an ecosystem on but an island. But this one is like, I can see why. Because you were yes. eating it. They did this in a week. Wow. Um, and then they were like, oh, we've eaten everything on this island. We should leave. So they prepared to leave, but three men decide to stay. They weren't from Nantucket and they felt a bit excluded because they were like, uh, the Nantucketers look after each other before they oh, look okay, after us. Okay. To add to the struggles, Joy now has TB. <laughs> I assume he had it before because I don't know where you'd find a badger um, in the middle of the sea, but he's got it. Oh um, What's... um. Is it a sexton, that, that like navigational device? Because I don't yeah. know why my brain is going here, but the hit single TB and no sexton. The crew then decide to head for Easter Island, but because they're reliant on the wind, they have quite a wobbly little path on their way there. It's mm-hmm. like very wavy. It is now the 4th of January. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been 44 days on these little boats. God. And... A week on an island. Yeah. You know. um, and Chase and Pollard realise that they have no hope of reaching Easter Island. Mm. And there's great fear among the sailors. When I heard this, I was like, well, no surprise, because the captain and the first mate are whispering to each other, <laughs> like, hey, I don't think we're going to get to Easter Island. No, we'll probably definitely all die before that. Mm. And Joy's like coughing in the corner. Yeah. 10th of January, Matthew Joy dies. Oh, of TB or just like, he's, it could be anything at this point. TB. Probably TB, um, because he's the third mate. So he would have been, oh, no, second mate. So he's quite well fed. Right before they got on the boats so he's have more reserves it's just the tb got him yeah um he was buried at sea. <laughs> he was buried yeah. on a lovely island <laughs> meanwhile they still can't find ground hold on <laughs> no he was buried at sea and the new leader of his boat is called hendrix so hendrix uh has got his lovely new gun and his job and he <laughs> 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 i'm sorry I thought- He's a lovely new girl. And I really thought you were going to say, Hendrix has got a lovely new girlfriend and he's showing her around the show. And I'm like, again, how and when did this happen? (laughs) No, he's got a gun. And he realises that Joy had not watched over the rations that they had on their boat and the food and water is nearly all gone. Oh no. At this point, Chase's boat becomes separated from the others. Oh. So now it's... Hendrix was Joy and Pollard and Chase is going off on his own little adventure. 20th of January, uh, Richard Peterson, a black sailor in Chase's boat, dies. Mm -hmm. The sailors claim they didn't eat him. Okay. But they probably did. Next, Lawson Thomas, another black man, but this time on Hendrix's boat, Hendrix's boat, dies. Mm. And Pollard and Hendrix, because they're together, decide to eat his body. You can see why, but oh. They ran out of hard tack the next day. Ah. And again, they claim they didn't murder him to eat him. Ah. January 23rd, black sailor Charles Shorter dies. Mm. They eat him. So it's all they the are, black sailors. They are full on snacking on these sailors. Yeah. Um, so here's the concept. Um, In a situation where you have to kill to survive, you kill and eat those who you are least familiar with. So I think it's like cows before horses, horses before dogs, dogs before acquaintances, acquaintances before friends, friends before family. Yeah. So they may have killed the black sailors to eat them. (laughs) That's the theory. Were these three men uh, the only black sailors on board? No, there were seven black sailors on board. So there were seven originally. Yeah. Um, One left early. He left off. He's the guy who went to Ecuador. Yeah. So now there are six. Mm -hmm. They've already eaten. Three have died. They claim they've only eaten two of them. Yeah, yeah. But but imagine being one of the remaining three black sailors being like, I'm not sure if the Nantucketers are killing us off and eating us. Yeah, so people have said Mm. that um, the black sailors had poorer diets on the ship 
they mm. so they had less body fat and in a starvation situation you want that body fat so they either die because of insidious racism or violent racism yeah probably. on chase's boat the men could barely move and they couldn't steer the boat or change the sails so they're now just like going where the wind will take them yeah on hendrix's boat on january the 27th isaiah shepherd dies he is the third black whaler to be eaten in seven days. The next day, Samuel Reed, a black whaler, dies and is eaten. Mm. So, like, yeah, you could say, oh, they had the poorest diet. Oh, they had less body fat. No, I'm noticing a theme that I cannot ignore. Yeah. Here's a fun side note about cannibalism, if you ever need it. Mm -hmm. Because the men they ate had no body fat, the eaters couldn't probably properly digest the ets yeah um because fat transports nutrients and facilitates absorption mm. and because they had no fat and the flesh that they were eating had no fat they continued to starve oh god i mean it's a bad day when you've got to eat another person's yeah. corpse it's especially a bad day when you've like had to make that decision mm. and you've gobbled the corpse and you're still starving yeah yeah because then you might as well have not have yeah scooped were they i mean like were they gaining anything from it no oh, God. <laughs> they were getting they were getting calories but because like there was no fat it wasn't absorbing properly so they were still like not doing well right it oh. probably kept them alive for longer Mm. but it just kept them alive to continue eating other yeah, humans yeah, yeah. Oh, which God. is not fun <laughs> i don't think you needed me to finish my sentence that way <laughs> i think it's generally assumed so on january the 29th hendrix's boat disappears Ooh. and they have no navigational equipment yes what is it no sextant and i've got tv <laughs> tv and no sextant but he's not got tv now so pollard and his crew are now alone at sea Mm -hmm. the remaining living sailors are all pollard's cousin and pollard's cousin's friends oh god none of them have yet died hmm. so they're like well we're hungry it's time for murder yeah even though they probably murdered before yeah um so it's the 6th of february they've run out of food i.e corpse yeah and ramsdale suggests drawing lots for who they will kill and eat yeah pollard refuses mm. but the other two boys are like no it sounds like a great plan we'd love to be part of this and so eventually pollard is like okay let's do it yeah. so they write their names on scraps of paper don't know why they've not eaten the paper because i would have gobbled that what's such a good point maybe it was a map and they were like oh we don't want to eat the map maybe but then they were like we'll rip, rip up, up the map to choose who to eat i also hold on if they're being besieged by whales constantly how they can they go with stabbing them again considering that's their job yeah i think it's not like constantly i think it's like every now and then one will appear and they're all scared of it i think probably if that was an option they would have done it obviously the tortoises are long gone i don't think oh, that yeah, needed yeah. to be said well we could eat the tortoises but we've got quite attached so it's either your cousin or your mates let's go owen coffin pollard's cousin draws the lot to die pollard had previously sworn to coffin's mother that he would protect him on the voyage God. Pollard was like, if you do not like your lot, I will shoot the first man that touches you. And then he also suggests that he takes Coffin's place in being killed oh. and eaten. But Coffin said no. And so they drew lots for who would kill him. And Did Ramsdale oh, chose. God. Um, but he is his childhood friend and he was the one who suggested it. Oh, God. So initially he refused, but then he eventually agreed. Mm. Uh, Coffin gave Pollard a message for his mother, and then they killed and ate him. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I know. It's gross. Yeah. Um, so now we are back with Chase, who's been flown off by himself for a while. Mm -hmm. It is the 8th of February. A guy called Cole dies, mm -hmm. and they eat him. And it's actually Chase's first act of cannibalism. 
Wow, okay. So, good for Chase, I guess. Well done. Is it, uh, have his crew been eating um, people? No, it's the whole boat. No one has died yet. Right. Um, well, someone did die. It was uh, Richard Peterson died, but they claimed they didn't eat Oh, him. yeah. yeah so yeah. his first official act of cannibalism is coal. Four days later, they were rescued by a ship from London that was called the Indian, and they'd spent 89 days lost at sea. 300 miles away, Pollard, they have eaten Ray now. I don't know if they killed him, but he is dead and eaten. So it's just um, Pollard and Ramsdale. It's Pollard and Ramsdale. Ramsdale's the guy that killed Pollard's cousin. And what they do is they, because they've run out of corpses to eat, is they oh no. crack open the bones and they drink the marrow. Mm. Which gave them some fat. Ah, oh, well done. Well done, Eventually, you marrow drinking lads. You should have done that with the first corpse. February the 23rd, they are also rescued by the Dauphin. Here's where it gets morbid again. So apparently they saw the boat that had come to rescue them, the big dolphin, <laughs> and then they turned back and began stuffing the bones into their pockets. And when they were on the ship, they continued to suck at the bones. God. Did How they grim. not... Like, surely on the Dauphin, they'd be like, oh, here, have some rations. Yeah. What, and they were like, no, they were like, we prefer the bones. We love bones. Oh, Jesus. So that's them. And back to Hendrix. Yeah. Um, Hendrix's boat and crew, uh, their skeletal remains were found on an island months later. Ugh. Well, at and least they, they made it to an island. Or maybe they didn't. They washed up on an island. Ah after being corpses oh dear god yeah. and did did hendrix's boat cannibalize anybody uh yes they That's did interesting then they didn't cannibalize anybody else they might have done because their bones i don't know if they oh, looked to true. see if they'd been gnawed on yeah or probably hendrix the guy with the gun was like who am i gonna eat next yeah true the survivors uh met up in chile and they sailed back to nantucket why would you sail? You would take anything other, like, not sea. Well, land is slow, though, isn't it? Yeah, but sea is where you just... Eight people. Eight people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Choices were made. They sailed back to Nantucket, and apparently they were met with a warm welcome, and no one minded the cannibalism, because it was accepted that that might have to well, happen. That's nice. Which is so weird to me, because they became cannibals because they were scared to go to the cannibal islands. For goodness sake. Which were yeah. cannibals, they were some nice indigenous people and Christian missionaries just hanging out together, apparently, it seems. They became the very thing they feared most. <laughs> The Henderson Island crew. These are the lads yeah. that confused you. Who are these boys? Well, it's four men. And they, it's three men. Yeah, I was going to say, it was like, did they have a child? <laughs> no. Right. Henderson Island crew. They had survived for four months. Wow. On shellfish. Wow. And were rescued by an Australian ship. Yes, these guys are winners. There's some joy and they didn't eat each other. No, just some shellfish, which seems like something that they should still have stayed on the island to consume. But then again, if, if like 12 of them were eating, then maybe they wouldn't have survived. Exactly. It's like very different, a crew of like 20 people versus three people Yeah, yeah. eating. Oh, well, I'm glad they made it. All eight returned to sea. What? Yeah, Pollard was in fact given another whaling ship, but he crashed it in Hawaii and was never given command of another one. Well, good, Jesus Christ! <laughs> and he, he had to join the night watch because he was like, no one will give me another whaling ship. And everyone's like, yeah, we won't. You, you keep Jeez. crashing them and eating people and you can't be trusted. Oh. I mean, I guess that's the thing, because I guess... Like, you get back and you're traumatised, but you're still technically only, you know, I don't know, 30. 
if that and yeah and it's like young. well you still need to provide for yourself and your fam though like we're not going to give you benefits in this day and age so yeah what can you do well i can wail he um i think it was that i think he spoke to it was either him or chase spoke to herman melville about his wow. experiences so um speaking of chase yes um chase also continued to be a whaler he um had a very long career captaining whaler ships however in his old age his mental health deteriorated and he would hide food in his attic that's the tale that inspired herman melville to write moby dick jesus it is just people surviving is incredible like in fact, oh, we should do more survival stories because mm. they're just so incredible and so wildly improbable. Yes, especially like being at sea in a little boat oh. for like 90 days. Absolutely ridiculous. Thank you for listening to the Other Martha's podcast, the show where a drama student and a film graduate talk about things we have no business discussing. If you enjoyed today's conversation please do subscribe to our channel for more